Good morning. My name is uh, Roberto Tuchman, and I am a pediatric neurologist at Miami Children's Hospital. I am the chair of the uh, International League Against Epilepsy and Autism Speaks uh, Task Force, looking at the problem of children with epilepsy and autism. And what I'd like to do today is talk to you a little bit about what we know and what we need to do in this group of children with both epilepsy and autism. What we know is that autism is present in up to 30% of subgroups of children with epilepsy. It is particularly uh, highly present in infants and children with seizures that start in the first three years of life. In addition, epilepsy occurs in approximately 8 to 20% of children with autism spectrum disorders. Epilepsy and autism both have multiple etiologies and variable clinical sy symptoms and outcomes, and as such, both are considered spectrum disorders. But a major risk factor for the coexistence of epilepsy and autism is intellectual disability, with the highest risk for epilepsy or autism in either group being in those with the most severe cognitive impairments. We know that there are two distinct peaks to seizure onset in children with autism, one occurring early prior to age three, and this of course is the group in which epilepsy is identified first and then autism is diagnosed. But there is also a later peak in which autism has already been identified and then epilepsy occurs. Although there is no clear evidence that autism is caused by epilepsy, the contribution of epilepsy and interictal epileptiform discharges um, to uh, ongoing cognitive deficits in children with autism continues to be controversial and poorly understood. Children with both epilepsy and autism do have an increased morbidity and mortality as compared to those with only autism or epilepsy. There is evidence to suggest that when epilepsy and autism coexist in the same person, there are shared anatomical and molecular mechanisms that account for both the epilepsy and autism. What we need to do now is we need to identify infants with seizures at risk for autism and those with autism at risk for epilepsy. We need to identify which genetic and environmental risk factors are common to epilepsy and autism. We need to identify and develop animal models biomarkers and assessment tools that inform outcome in infants with epilepsy that go on to develop autism as well as those with autism that go on to develop epilepsy. We need to look closely at the underlying mechanisms of convergence between autism and epilepsy and we need to coordinate our efforts in tissue and brain banking in epilepsy and autism. And finally we need to develop treatment models both from a behavioral perspective and a pharmacological perspective that um, inform us about appropriate treatments for infants and children with epilepsy and autism. Thank you very much.